Hey Triple Fivers, Andrew here. Want to talk to you about something a little bit more enjoyable than my last video. We can move on and talk about something that we all enjoy as watch enthusiasts and that is the NATO strap. What I'm going to do in this video is talk about five interesting, cool, amazing facts about the NATO strap. A fascinating piece of gear in its own right and absolutely a piece of horological history. And then I'm going to do a review on one of my favorite NATO strap brands, Toxic NATO straps. So stick around for the facts, see if you know the five facts that I'm going to share, and then hear about a brand that I recommend here on the channel. Okay, first question for you. What is the true name of the NATO strap? If you guessed G10 strap, you are correct. This goes back to a term from the British Military of Defense, which began issuing the straps in the early 70s. I read 1973 in some articles and 74 in other articles. When you joined the Ministry of Defense, you were issued a chronograph, but that chronograph had a leather strap. If you wanted the fabric strap, you had to fill out a form called the G1098 so that the name G10 became a shorthand for getting a G10 strap. Here's a second interesting fact about the NATO strap. When you filled out that G10 form, you might think, oh, my NATO strap is going to have uh, the size and specifications and colors that I would like. But in fact, that would not be true. In fact, you were only able to get it in 20 millimeters and you're only able to get it in Admiralty Gray. This was the initial military approved color for this strap, and it continues to be probably the most versatile color of the strap, even to this day. By the way, just random shout out, you should check out the Gray NATO podcast with James Stacy and Jason Heaton. Jason's another Minneapolis local who I actually haven't had the pleasure to meet, but they're both really awesome watch journalists, two of my favorite. Okay, here's an interesting third fact about NATO straps. What is their main military appeal? What's the main benefit that they have? If you guess moisture wicking, that is one property that's very important. If you guess durability, that's also very important. But the true reason from a military perspective for the NATO strap becoming standard issue by the British Military of Defense, it's a fail safe. Because the watch is attached to the wrist with lugs, and there are therefore lug bars, those lug bars are possibly able to fail even if they're fully attached to the case. And so having a strap that's attached in more than one way, in other words, weaved through both of the lugs, ensures that if one of the lug bars breaks, the watch is still gonna be on your wrist. Okay, fourth interesting horological fact about NATO straps. Did they begin in the mid 70s? No. Did they begin with James Bond in Goldfinger? That's reference 6538, Gorgeous Submariner. Here's a fourth interesting fact about NATO straps. Even though the current iteration of NATO straps takes their nomenclature from the British Ministry of Defense's G10 straps, they actually go back much further, all the way to World War I, in point of fact. In World War I, military watches began to be regularly used and the wristlet watch, which was a repurposed pocket watch, became something that was at least issued in a small number to battalions. And there were a variety of straps developed to accommodate these military purposes. And I wanna thank thespringbar.com for sharing some of these images online and for putting together an excellent article, which I wanna link down below if you wanna learn more about World War One and World War II history on NATO straps. Now the NATO strap became further evolved and refined in World War II. The most notable example to me is in the well-known A11, which was available from 1940 as a standard issue watch for the Allies with either a two or a one piece strap. But there are other very fascinating examples including Fliegers and other military watches in the Second World War. I actually think that this fourth fact is especially amazing. Since the inception of the wristwatch at the turn of the 20th century, fabric one-piece straps have been part 
of the common use of the wristwatch. So it really is deeply rooted in wristwatch history. And a fifth excellent fact about NATO straps is that we are still in the midst of evolution when it comes to the design of NATO straps. And in fact, the best NATO straps ever made are being made today. We have a variety of excellent manufacturers making NATO straps, Tudor and Omega in particular come to mind. But we also have many small makers that I'll be highlighting in this video and in my next video where I show how to wear NATO straps, highlighting the excellent and new designs that NATO strap makers are bringing to the table. The new straps are softer, more comfortable, more durable, and just overall of a much higher quality. And that's something that if we've been into watches for a long time, we can still find new appreciation and new enjoyment of NATO straps with these new companies. I hope you enjoyed these five quick NATO watch strap facts. Let's get down to the tabletop and take a look at a very excellent example of the new contemporary NATO straps that are on the market that I mentioned in my fifth fact. Here's a nice raw shot of a toxic NATO strap on my Seiko Alpinist. You can just see that it's nice and sturdy, great quality, holds the tallish Seiko Alpinist with its internal bezel on the wrist excellently. Really a nice strap for this watch. So for the second part of this video, I want to highlight toxic NATO straps. Now, the reason why I'm highlighting toxic NATO straps first on this channel in a series on NATO straps, and I will be featuring another brand in another video, is because this is the first brand that I wanted to feature. See, toxic NATO straps is run by a guy named Terry, who is a fellow watch collector that I got to know through the Dive Watch Connection, a watch forum with a very uh, ragtag but uh, serious bunch of watch collectors. And he was a long term Dive Watch fan. Now, I do want to disclose after my last video that these straps were sent in for review, but I did not otherwise get compensated for these straps. So, what has basically happened is I got in touch with Terry and I said, hey, look, man, I think your straps are going to really be uh, well received by my uh, subscribers on my channel. You should send me a bunch. And that's exactly what he did. You've got a wide variety of military style straps here, including this nice bond strap here. Uh, I want to also mention that there's a variety of other patterns of straps on the website. And if you don't like the weave pattern on the Shiznit, there are other versions out there. The other version is called the Rogue, and this is also a very handsome strap, a little more traditional in its weave. Uh, the Shiznit is softer, the Rogue is a little bit tougher. Uh, both of them are nice and thick. Uh, this one is a little bit less pliable than the Shiznit. All in all, I'm very impressed with these straps, and I want to just let you know that if you're looking for a very high quality strap, you can go to Toxic NATO's. Uh, I'm absolutely impressed with this, and I'm sure that they're going to become a cornerstone of the NATO straps in my collection. They already have. Well, there's a variety of straps available on Toxic NATO's. The Shiznit is the most famous strap from their bunch, just known for its beautiful weave and high quality hardware. And you can see that the hardware on this strap is uh, definitely above and beyond the stamped hardware that you would typically get on like an eBay type strap. It is thick and heavy and tough. And uh, this means just that your NATO strap wearing experience isn't going to be wimpy at all. These straps are really sturdy and really, uh, really high quality. Um, I've been really happy with these straps. Um, I've worn them on a variety of dive watches as well as on my field watches and the quality is just really excellent. The other thing I like about Terry is he isn't really spending a lot of money on marketing and we will be looking at another watch strap brand that has done a little bit more to create a, a fancier package for their straps and uh, well I uh, appreciate that and enjoy a, a nice unboxing experience that's keeping the price of toxic NATO straps down and the quality high so you're really getting a very nice value strap for your price and that's the thing that I think I uh, most more than anything else uh, what I really like about toxic nail straps is uh, the direct connection that you can have with the owner and purchasing the straps he's a very great communicator the high quality straps and the low price those are the three things that I think really make this for an excellent package and here might be the best looking shot of the bunch this is the toxic NATO shiznit 
in olive green on my Seiko Turtle. Just a really killer combination and it's nice to have a supple and soft NATO strap that can handle the weight of a dive watch. Definitely an enthusiast driven design here. This was easily the most worn toxic strap that I've had since I've received these. Why don't you let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video if you enjoyed the kind of combo of facts and review. The next video that I'll be doing in this series is just how to style, how to wear a NATO strap, how to install it. Uh, and I will be featuring another NATO strap brand in that video. So please stay tuned and uh, let me know in the comments below what uh, combo you like to have with your NATO straps. Are you a NATO strap fan uh, or have you moved on to other things? How about uh, leather NATOs? Any fans uh, on the channel here of leather NATO straps? That's another combo that I do enjoy. All right, thanks a lot, guys. If you're uh, at the end of this video and you made it this far, please let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. And if you've watched a couple videos of mine and you're not a subscriber, or if this is the first time you're here to the channel, I want to just invite you to subscribe. Please do support Triple Five Gear by hitting that subscribe button. And if you're really hardcore, hit the dang bell.